Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. William Owens is an American poet who is making a civil rights statement by retracing the historic march from Montgomery to Selma. Today we interview evangelist William Owens. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Today we have a special treat because I'm introducing my new friend, William Owens, who is a renowned poet, has written over 15 books, a prolific author, and a man of God who loves Jesus. In fact, he goes by evangelist William Owens. Let me welcome you to the program, someone who has just completed a historic walk from Montgomery to Selma, retracing in reverse the steps that Martin Luther King Jr. made from Selma to Montgomery so many years ago. Welcome to the program via Skype from Alabama, William Owens. How are you today, sir? Dr. Chaps, I'm doing great, Dr. Chaps. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm absolutely elated as I finish a very important objective the Lord gave me, and it's good to be with you to share today. Well, it looks like you broke a sweat there. Uh, how many miles did you walk today? And uh, how long did this take you to retrace the steps of Martin Luther King Jr.? You know, historically they did it from Selma to Alabama, as you had said, and God spoke to my heart to go back and to go from Montgomery to Selma. It actually is a 54 mile um, trek. It took me about nine days because my hamstring strained. So I had to take three days off and then I could only do about five to seven miles a day. So, but God had his purpose in it all. He spoke to me every step of the way and I also did Facebook Live and encouraging and exhorting the body of Christ to do what God's called us to do in this nation and that's to bring healing to America. And the purpose for this walk was to exemplify the fact that you see this chain on my neck that even though there have been all types of things that hold America's down God is calling us to realize liberty is in Jesus alone. And now I can take this chain off and I'll do it on your show. <laughs> I love the symbolism of uh, being released from the bondage of slavery. Of course, the Bible talks about slavery to sin. Of course, America has had a horrible history of slavery. And yet the civil rights movement, which you are remembering this week is sort of uh, one of the important steps that America took to restore the civil rights of African-Americans. Uh, for those who don't remember, how many years ago did MLK Jr. do that march and, and why? You know, it was 1965 in the month of March. And it, was, it came about through a lady by the name of Rosa Parks who refused to give her seat up on a bus. And that sparked the movement. Um, the first attempt was to walk and that particular day, a, a gentleman was killed and um, he was shot, he was killed, and that brought national rage throughout all of America. People flew in by the droves. They had over 3,400 people who wanted to walk from Selma to Montgomery. They only could allow about 300 because it was too many people. And so what ensued was a walk from Selma to Montgomery to object to the fact that Negro Americans could not vote. And so it turned out being much more than that though. It was a call for all Americans to join together and to be a voice, I guess, in justice of all kinds. And you had white Americans, you had black, black Americans, you had Jews. And I might point out that two white Americans were killed because of their stance with all Americans to be a voice against this injustice of Americans not being able to vote. It was truly putting the constitution on the line. And we know that not too many months after that, um, Johnson even said, I have a dream. And the right to vote was a reality for all Americans. Amen to that. So it was roughly 53, maybe 54 years ago, he, he made yes, that he march. And uh, you're saying it's 53 or 54 miles. Maybe there's a significance 50, uh, in, 
in, in why you chose to do it now in 2019. Uh, what happened last week? You were at the State House in Alabama and you felt inspired. Yes. You know, we had just done a, um, a town hall meeting, the Civil Rights Town Hall meeting, and we had just done that. So I went to the State House to pray on the third floor, and it was in my prayer time that I just saw myself. I had an epiphany. I saw myself actually walking with a chain around my shoulders. And the message God was speaking to my heart that even though it's been 50 something years, even though we wear the suits and the ties and the hats and the shoes and we eat the food we want to as Americans, we're still bound. We're still bound with ideologies. We're still bound with political correctness. We're still bound with religion and we're still divided as a nation. And the Lord had me to walk, to pray for America each step of the way, to be a voice to all believers to realize something. It's only through Christ we can be set free. Only he can truly remove the chains that hold us back, that hold us down. And this political divide has even divided believers. We've got to stop it. God is calling us to do what he's called us to do, and that's to be ambassadors for Christ, not to be the echoes of any particular movement, more so the movement than what Jesus made when he went to Calvary's cross to die for our sins. I think you're spot on, and, and politics aside, whether you're Republican or Democrat uh, or other party, independent, uh, we all need Jesus. And you as an evangelist are carrying on the Bible message of Dr. Martin Luther King. He was an ordained minister and he, Jesus was his main message. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask uh, William Owens to help us remember what it was like. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit, or from angels, or from invisible demons. We've created a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels. We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by William Owens, who is an American poet who has authored 15 books. William, uh, how can people find copies of your books and, and what is what are they about? You can visit my website, americaspoet.com. A brief little snippet about that website, America's Poet. I wrote a book, I wrote some poems during the election of 2016. And on September 14th, I wrote a poem called America in Trouble. It was an answer to a then quarterback who decided to take a knee. And I wrote that poem, America in Trouble. When I wrote that poem, the next day I wrote another poem, Prayer is an American. And I kept writing. I wrote a poem every day, get this, for 53 days. And <laughs> there's that 53 wow. again. Yeah. And uh, it turned out to be a book called Poems for America. And so when I wrote those poems, um, 
God spoke to my heart. He said, I want you to be America's poet because I want you to use prophetic and prolific poetry to bring healing to this nation. And I said, America's poet. And, and I said, well, let me do some research. And I researched the domain name. I thought something would come up with history of poetry and, and poets. Nothing came up. And sure enough, that domain was available. And so I purchased it. And since then, I used that website to really um, exhort and also to glorify God through poetry. And so that's a little history about that um, particular domain name. And, and so God is using me. I've written over 700 poems for the Lord, and I continue to write poetry. In fact, I did a poem for this walk, Dr. Chaps, and it's called Suit in Chains. And people can experience that poem right on the website, America's Poet. Can you give us a flavor without giving away the poem itself, because we, we want people to buy the book, but what are some of the themes sure. in that poem, Suit in Chains? You know, I start off with that poem that we wear up Dollar General. And the whole theme behind that particular poem is that um, we have this personification of accomplishment as Americans. Another line I put in that poem is that we are fed sound bites from the media. Um, another aspect is that uh, we allow ourselves to be played by politics. Um, and so the whole poem is designed to really rattle us about being played as believers. This is really about believers. This is not, you know, we have our political preference. And if we're going to be a Republican, if we're going to be a Democrat, we need to be it as unto the Lord. A lot of us have allowed our political to use us, and we're not letting God use us to influence the political process. So this whole poem is designed to recall that we as ambassadors for Christ should not be trusted by any principality, by any movement, by any organization, but we should be used by God to speak change to our culture and to our nation. I think you're you're onto something there. I, I happen to be Republican, but I'm Christian first, right? And Jesus tries, uh, to rule my life and I try to let him rule my life and that I want Jesus and I want the Bible to inform my politics and then to, for his kingdom ultimately to be established in my political expression as unto the Lord, just like you're saying. Um, I, I'm not gonna ask you if you favor uh, President Trump or, or President Obama, but America has been in such a, such a polarized state in the last, 16 years, let's say, even from the Bush administration un until today. Do you see America uh, coming together at any point in some kind of political healing? You know, no, I don't see America coming together in terms of political healing. I see politics playing um, playing out the, 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 the very will of our king. Jesus said the government is, on his shoulders and the kingdoms of this world. And I will say that I am a, um, I will say that I am a Republican because um, it's the party of liberty. It's the party of freedom. Um, they, they are aware of God. They're conscious of God. They're the party of life. Um, these are facts. Um, and when we see a um, platform, then we have a problem. When we see a party that has embraced abortion, we have a problem. These things are not political in and of themselves. They are affront to God. We have to stand with God. We have to pray for the leaders. We pray for our presidents, no matter who they are, knowing that God has put them in office for a reason. I recently did a poem, Dr. Chaps, called The Melody of My Life. And it's the voice of the unborn speaking in the first person from their mother's womb. Wow. They can also see that poem on my website, America's Poet. It's a very moving piece. Well, the pro-life movement has had such a profound influence in my life because I was born to a single mom who told me, you know, she she didn't think abortion was an option because she knew I was a child. She knew that was a baby. And she eventually gave me up for adoption. Right. And that profoundly helped mm. me uh, because I was raised by an adoptive family who loved me, a mom and a dad who raised me as their own. I'm pro-life to this day because of their example. And yet the pro-abortion movement has really devastated the African-American community. Can you talk about your, your understanding has. of that? You know, um, more blacks have been killed. Um, more black lives have been lost. 
um, to the single act of abortion more so than any other um, cause of death combined. And that means millions upon millions of blacks have not had a chance to experience life. Thus, the melody of my life, the whole idea behind the poem is that when God makes us, there's a melody that goes along with our creation and it's sung throughout the whole entire process of our being created. You have to really experience the poem, but back to your point, we have to address this atrocity because it's modern day bail, it's modern day a sacrifice of the unborn. And then some of the things that we're hearing, what they do with that unborn child is absolutely atrocious. And so that's my understanding. We, we're not a voice for the voiceless. We're gonna have to stand before God and be accountable for being silent. I had the director and producer of Unplanned to actually make a comment on the poem, The Melody of My Life. You can also read that on the website, America's Poet, and I believe the poem will touch your heart. Well, I'm gonna go there as soon as this show is done and I wanna read, I'm fascinated by your ideas. You're, you speak so eloquently and yet the main it's motivation done. for your message is ultimately Jesus Christ. Let's talk about that after this short commercial break and we'll meet again evangelist William Owens after this. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. If you've watched our program, you know that we stand with Israel as God's chosen people. We need you to sign a petition today. Why? Because did you know that even as Iran is now developing 800 mile range cruise missiles, could be nuclear tip very soon, that our US Congress has now three brand new freshman congresswomen, we call them the three anti-Semitic musketeers, Ocasio-Cortez and two Muslims, Talib and Omar. And they are influencing Nancy Pelosi to have the most anti-Semitic Congress in years. We need to stand with our friends in Israel and that's why we're asking you to sign a petition. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Don't divide Jerusalem, stand with Israel and stand up to the United Nations. We will fax it to the Congress, but you need to sign today. Take a stand. Visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign our petition today. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week? with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting, and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car, you can watch the video on your smartphone, visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms, visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined now by evangelist William Owens, who not only writes poetry, over 15 books uh, through the website, they're available, americaspoet.com. You know, when I, when I heard you were coming on my show, I was thinking, oh, this is Maya Angelou, I'm gonna have America's Poet. <laughs> but no, you're, you're, you're totally different flavor, maybe some of the same kinship, the same spirit, uh, she was so beautiful and so gentle in the way that she expressed her ideas. Uh, but you have a, a motivation more like Martin Luther King Jr. because you do this for Jesus and you do it unto the Lord. Why? Well, first of all, let me say I would never compare myself to a Dr. Martin Luther King. He was truly a man after the heart of God in so many ways. And I believe God used him. And God is no respect of persons, however. I believe God wants to use each of us. And I believe in the canons of heaven it will record the work that we did for God. And my whole purpose behind this is to provoke. A lot of the things that I said during my walk from, from Montgomery to Selma was that God is awakening America to arise. One of my books is called Warriors Arise. 
entering into a realm of spiritual warfare and confrontation, we have to recognize something that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians chapter six, and only those who have been, who, who have been born again, only those who call upon the name of the Lord actually have access to weapons to defeat these elements. And a lot of our issues that we're facing in our cities, in our states, and, and in America has to do with spiritual warfare. And we're absolutely just missing in action. Um, we're missing in action. We have allowed ourselves to become comfortable in our churches. We've allowed ourselves to justify our own selves by just being complacent and complicit to the narratives of the day. God's kingdom does not apologize for having all authority. He has the keys to death and hell. And we have to access these keys and really speak truth to our nation, speak truth to our culture, and even speak truth to politicians, hold them accountable to what they're saying and what they do. That's what God's calling me to do. And now I'm entering into the second phase of this experience of which the Lord just gave me what to do next. And I'm so excited about it. Well, I wanna hear a little bit about your testimony of Jesus. How has he changed your life and when did you first encounter him? I was in the Air Force. I was, one night I was smoking a cigarette and I was writing my mom a letter telling her why I can't do the God thing right now. Well, when I blew smoke out of my, I don't know if it was out of my mouth or my nose, probably both, I heard, I heard the Lord say to me, you know your life is not gonna last that long. I was looking at the vapor going up and I didn't know the Bible says that our life is but a vapor. And so he bargained with me. He just said, why don't you give your heart to me? You've tried everything else. What do you have to lose? If, if I don't do what I say I'm gonna do, you can go back and just really do it right. And I thought about it for a while. I said, that's a pretty good offer. And I was petrified of how things were turning out in my life. So I walked to the back office in the Air Force. I worked mids, I worked alone. And I got on my knees and I repented of my sins and I asked Jesus Christ to be my savior. And I had peace like I've never had before. And I threw myself into the word of God and I began to write books about a year after that. And I've been writing ever since and my life is yielded to him as a vessel for his purpose. Well, thank God. What a beautiful story of how he changed you. Um, Amen. What else in your life changed at that point? You, you saw the, the smoke going up as a vapor and you thought, if I'm only gonna be here for a little while, I might as well serve the Lord while I can. Uh, some people wait their whole life and they wait till the end and they think, oh, I'll just repent and squeak into heaven. But they missed an entire lifetime, years and years when they could have been serving the Lord and making a difference for him. And that's a lost opportunity. But you're making the most of that opportunity. Now 15 books, you're, you're changing the world, you're doing uh, uh, you know, reconciliation marches and, and, and trying to bring the kingdom of God and the, and the message of racial reconciliation, the civil rights movement. Uh, thank you for making such a difference with your life. Amen, Dr. Chaps. You know, about a couple of years ago, I actually did a, a, an evangelistic tour on my bike. I rode my bike 1,014 miles. This is a book called Astonished. And I evangelized uh, sharing Jesus with people as I met them on my journey. I even led people to Christ. I had an amazing miracle testimony in the book, how the Lord protected and kept me doing my journey. And let me just say that this is bigger than the civil rights movement. It's bigger than the march. It's bigger than anything. It's the kingdom of God manifested throughout times in history, whether it was the civil rights, whether it was Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, whether it was the walls of Jericho coming down, God has used moments throughout history to show his righteousness. And I believe the civil rights was a righteous move of God more so than it was of Dr. Martin Luther King or any man. God used Dr. Martin Luther King. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. It's time for you to identify what God's called you to do. And for the next 21 days, I wanna invite people to join me in a fast as we end this decade. I'm doing a Daniel fast. God told me to make it public, to invite others to fast some form of fashion for America. As we end this decade and we go into a new decade, God wants to do something fascinating. And only as we press into the kingdom of heaven by violence will we be able to experience what he wants us to do. And that's where God has me. And I'm just humbled to be his bond servant, to be obedient. Well, I appreciate that word bond servant. It, it's a biblical word. It, it means something different than we imagine. It's when you volunteer to be a servant to your Lord. 
Uh, of course, a lot of American right. slavery historically was not volunteer. People were kidnapped and tortured. Um, and yet the Bible speaks of a freedom from a different kind of slavery. And that is the slavery we all right. have to sin. That, that sin. if yeah. we don't have the Lord Jesus ruling our heart, then we do have sin and the devil ruling our heart and making us his slave. And there's a lot of uh, uh, negative consequences that come out of that. You're speaking a higher message than just historic Amen. America. Uh, you're speaking about freedom from, G from, from the devil and from sin. When you take off those chains as you did before, that Jesus is That's the right. liberator from slavery to sin. That's right, he is. And this chain represents all forms of bondage. Unfortunately, we've seen highlighted forms of bondage, such as racial division, um, economic inequality. We need to set our affections on things above. We need to set our height on pleasing the King of Kings. And a lot of these things has held people down and has caused great division and distracted us from the high call of God. What if God called me to suffer? What if God called me to die for him? What if he called me to endure hardship? We need to put our affections on a different platform. That is pleasing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and being sure we're focused on doing his will. And so this walk represented that. Remove the distractions, Set be set free from the false narratives that are luring Christians in and distracting them from the mandate that God has for them. Find God's will for your life and fulfill it. That's the ultimate. Store for yourself treasures in heaven for he's coming back and his rewards are with him. And I want my reward, Dr. Chaps. Amen. Somebody's inspired right now. Would you lead us in a short prayer? Father in heaven, we are grateful, so grateful for your son, Jesus. May we now, Lord, make up that part that you've left for us. May we take up on ourselves the cross that we're to carry, that we're to carry until you call us home. May we cease from being distracted. May we yield ourselves as willing vessels to be obedient and to fulfill your will for our lives. May we love one another. In Jesus' name, the son of the living God, we pray, amen. Amen and amen. William Owens' website is americaspoet.com. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit. Call us if you need prayer at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.